Jason, it was a tie game there at 96 with under three minutes left and then got out toward nine and two down the stretch. Uh, what happened there during that period? Yeah, we gave up, I think, uh, a couple threes there um, in the zone. So we'll look at that to see how we can get better. But um, the guys played hard. Um, Gave ourselves a chance to win on the road against the Western Conference champs, uh, who also have won nine in a row. So everyone in that locker room did, you know, execute the game plan. Um, we just missed some shots down the stretch, and they and they didn't. And so uh, we'll go and look and see how we can get better for uh, Friday. Chris Paul didn't have a good shooting night, but that one play can you describe when he saved the ball from going out of bounds and threw it to eight foot of dunk to put him up by four? Yeah, you're talking about a future Hall of Famer, uh, one of the best, I think, uh, he's on the on the list of 75, uh, and that's what players like that, they make plays at the end of the game, no matter what they're shooting from the field um, or how they're playing, they're always going to find a way to win, and he, he did that, he made a winning play for themselves, for, for the Suns. What was the thinking behind the, the zone defense that you guys went to as, as reference? Yeah, we were we were struggling guarding the snap, the stack play, they were running, so we, we tried to just slow them down a little bit. Uh, it took them out of the play, uh, but we had, um, you know, we were doing up threes uh, in that zone, and so that, you know, it happens. We, we rolled the dice to see if we can get them out of the play that was hurting us. We did, but on the other side of that, we gave up uh, a couple threes. What do you think of Porzingis just overall? Uh, it was good. Such as shot selection, it seems like he was really, you know, trying to create stuff. Yeah, he was good. He was great. Uh, everybody who played tonight was great. You, you give yourself a chance to win on the road. Not easy to win here. Um, so uh, everybody was good tonight. What did you see uh, out of Frank and uh, Trey? They were great. Uh, I just said it. Everybody <laughs> who put on a uniform and played minutes was great tonight. Uh, they get, you know, they. Gave it, it's hard fought. It's not easy to win against the, the best in the West. And so uh, we took it down to the last two minutes. Unfortunately, we, we missed shots. They made shots. And that's how this, this league goes. Is it easier to come back and uh, play them again on Friday knowing that you just played them? You know, you already got the film on what's going on. Yeah, it's the schedule is the schedule. I mean, you're going to ask me that with the Clippers. And then you're going to ask me that with, with Minnesota. So you got to play the games where they fall, and that's how it goes. Brad, did you have a question? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, Jason about uh, you guys have played so well in clutch time. I believe you guys were five and zero in clutch games. Uh, what do you think the different? Do you think you guys? Uh, you think perhaps that's where you missed Luca the most was in the last couple minutes? Uh, well, Brad, I think first you got to play with the guys who can play, and the guys who were playing played great. Um, again, we we missed some shots that were at the rim. And they made shots. Um, you know, if Luca was in, we don't know where we are in position of that game. But the guys who played, they played their heart out. And uh, you know, we we just came up short. And I think it's a great lesson, you know, because Luca could be in foul trouble or Luca isn't playing due to an injury. Um, it just hopefully gives these guys confidence that they can compete at the highest level. Uh, Jalen, you scored to uh, tie the game up at 96 with less than three to go, and then you guys got outscored nine to two down the stretch. What happened during that period of time? Um, they just uh, they outscored us. Um, I think uh, for us, the guys on the floor, uh, we got to be communicating a little better. Um, yeah, it was just. Down the stretch, uh, we gotta be more. We gotta talk better on the, on the defensive side of the ball. It's just that's unacceptable by us. Yeah. Is it even more frustrating than uh, Jalen? It seemed like you guys were in control of over three and a half quarters. Yeah, I mean, it's frustrating. You know, a loss is a loss, and no matter how it happens, um, we're gonna go back and look what we did and how we can fix it. But um, we we had control of it. But um, they're a good team. They went to the finals last year for a reason. They have a, a Hall of Famer on, the, on that. He didn't play too well, but he leads that team. Uh, he didn't shoot too well, but, I mean, he got those guys going. And um, just props to them. They, they, fought it, they fought it out. Were you surprised by their switching or, or I guess, their, their lack thereof? It looked like they recovered really well to you a couple times to get the primary man back to you out of the pick and roll situation. Yeah, I mean, they're a good team. Um, they have uh, great pieces, great defenders. Now, the guys that come off the bench are still lengthy defenders. Um, I mean, just seeing Mikhail 
on the, that side of the ball is something I'm I'm pretty used to. But he he does such a great job um, playing on both sides of the ball. Uh, um, you just gotta give him credit. You know they they kept fighting. We had control, but they kept fighting and fighting, and then they got it. They got it in the end. Probably more fun being his teammate. Definitely. Uh, Definitely. Eddie. Yeah, Jalen, <clears throat> you guys had a lot of guys step up uh, really well tonight. Uh, does this kind of just reaffirm the, how slim the margin is uh, when you're missing a guy like Luca? Yeah, um, it's it's tough. It's tough when we're missing a piece like that. But um, I'm I'm actually, besides those last couple of minutes or the last uh, whatever that happened in the fourth quarter, I'm I'm proud of what we did. Um, we had guys step up. Um, it may not have sh it may not have you no know, helped us in the win column tonight, but confidence wise going forward, that's gonna help us. It's gonna be big. You now if just in case I mean knock on wood, someone goes down, uh, the next man up mentality. And so the mentality that these guys have come with the bench, staying ready, um, it's it's the mentality that a lot of us have had for a, a long time. Okay. Jim, it was a tie game only three minutes ago. And describe what you saw, what happened down, down the stretch. Uh, I don't know, man. Just most importantly, uh, just uh, happy that we fought, you know, all the way to the end um, without Luca and um, uh, persevered through a lot of the ups and downs throughout the entire game. But uh, um, I'm happy that we made sure that. Um, we kept our foot in the gas. So everybody stayed aggressive. Um, just a couple of defensive slips um, throughout the course of the game. Um, just not only the last three minutes, but throughout the course of the game. I think um, um, bit us in the back a little bit. So um, just got to move on, move forward, watch film tomorrow, see what we did wrong, and, and correct those mistakes that we did. Is it even more frustrating because it seemed like you guys were in control of the game for over three and a half quarters? Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, if you don't get the result, then it doesn't even matter. So, uh, um, I know we could play better, uh, and, and that's a good thing. Kim, any? Not really. Okay, Brad, go ahead. Yeah, Tim, I wanted to ask you about the contributions of Mila Kina and uh, Burke off the bench. They seem to give you guys a really good lift there. Yeah, did a great job of, uh, you know, coming in and putting their foot on the gas. I mean, J. Kidd always says, "Next man up." When, when that, when the first person is down, and and I think those guys held their own and did a phenomenal job of just coming in, giving us energy, giving us, us that spark, and making sure that they played their role the right way. KP was a tie game there with under three minutes ago. What happened at that stretch? The guys got us scored nine and two. Yeah, uh, this fourth quarter. 37 points, too many, you know, to win the game. Um, it was it was our game. Um, yeah, just I think we, we missed a couple um, easy layups towards the end. They kind of got in, um, you know, got the crowd into it, got a couple stops, and and the momentum went on their side. And you know, then it was it was it was tough to uh, stop them. They hit, I think Booker hit a huge three or somebody I don't know. Yeah, Booker. Um, uh, yeah, uh, but. Uh, Come out of this game with the feeling that uh, obviously it's you know team wins and team team loses, but I feel like a lot of it is on me. I, I should have played much better. Um, I had no legs, I had no legs. I left my legs at the hotel or something <laughs> today. Um, so yeah, I feel like uh, I should have done a much better job today. It was even more frustrating, KT, when it seemed like you guys were in control of over three and a half quarters tonight. Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have to watch the game, uh, rewatch it, and and you know, but um, I felt like we we could have played so much better. Uh, it was weird also playing without Luca. You know, he's normally orchestrating all the offense, and now we're kind of out there like looking at each other, like what we're running, what we're running. Right. So I think we're we're a little bit uh, uh, unprepared for that maybe our, us as players out there um, because you, you know you get used to it. Somebody's always calling the plays, and, and um, I think I think. Uh, even if Lucas out for next game, I think we'll do a much better job of that. You did have seven assists, which I believe is a career high. I mean, I know the ball was just by necessity going mm -hmm. through you a lot more often, but did it feel like you were making reads in the in the right ways for that to happen? Yeah, um, I was also just 
as I said, I had no legs, so I was kind of like, okay, let me get Tim involved. Let's 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 play. Let's move and um, um, and yeah, just uh, trying to uh, you know all those slips, all those half pick and pops, pick and rolls. It's, it's where they get messed up, and where JB and Tim and 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 Trey can get those drives and, and get those pull ups and all that. So just trying to um, make the game easier for my teammates. I think I think Jason. It wasn't it wasn't this game, but he was talking about it a couple of games ago about how on the pick and roll, if you catch it rolling kind of in the middle of the paint, that they really trust you as a distributor there. Yeah. What's the progression of reads that you look through in that situation, or is it just too varied and different? Um, it depends. Like for example, if if Luke is playing mm-hmm. in the pick and roll, they might double him. So as soon as they, he gets doubled, I'm gonna opening up. I'm getting the ball from him, you know, he's, he's, he's passing it to me and then I have to make the next read, you know, and then it's a four on three. Um, and, and then, you know, whoever's open, we just swing the ball and boom, get, we get to open uh, open shot. Um, and then, yeah, it depends on who, who, who's playing the pick and roll. We try to make the read as, as fast as we can. Um, you know, with Tim, they might be up because he, he can come off and shoot right away. And then I have that quick, quick roll and quick pocket pass. Um, with JB, I kind of... Um, JB's great at doing that fake hand, uh, fake like giving it back to me, but then just keeps going, you know. So yep. little things that we're, um, I think we're uh, uh, catching and, and, and getting a feel for each other, you know. And, and, and I think the the more the season goes, the the better we'll get at those and at those reads and knowing what each, each of us are thinking, kind of reading each other's minds. How much does this show, like you say, the value of a guy like a Luca down the stretch? Because she knows he, he's going to be running the show in the last four or five minutes of the game. Yeah, no, it's not that you know. It, it, JB is the same. JB can have the ball in his hands and make huge plays down down the stretch. Tim can do the same. Um, if you know, I get the ball, I, I have the confidence that I can do the same. You know, but uh, it was more throughout the game. We're kind of missing somebody that kind of calls the play and boom, we run that, we run this. You know, I think. Um, I think yeah, we will be more prepared a little bit. We kind of, at least that was my feeling. Um, but yeah, Luca is Luca is Luca, you know. Mm-hmm. He's, right, he's out there just, you know, showing what what type of talent he is. Every night he steps on the floor. Sorry, KK, cut you off there. Uh, Brad, last one. Yeah, KP. Uh, no one's calling it a moral victory by any stretch, but uh, Tim and Jason were indicating that you know perhaps one silver lining to this was. Is the fact that you guys played the Western Conference, uh, you know, champions down to the wire without Luca, and that could be a confidence booster as you guys go along through the season. Do you yeah. agree with that? Uh, I would agree. I would agree. Uh, I think we we fought hard. We played really really hard uh, on the defensive end, especially. I think if our offense would have been a bit sharper, um, um, I think it would have been a different game. Honestly, they, they didn't play that well. We didn't play well at all. Um, I don't think it was the best basketball we have shown, uh, neither for them also. But I think that was uh, that's the good thing we could take away from that. I think we did a pretty good job uh, defensively. We'll, we'll, we'll um, look to do the same in the next game, and then hopefully we can we can uh, we can be better on our side also.